Okay, so hi everyone, I'm Phil Martin. I'm a postdoc at the University of Cambridge where I work with the conservation evidence team where we try to provide evidence to guide conservation practice. And today I'm really happy to be talking to you about an exciting new project um, I've been working on, um, developing a new method of meta-analysis that we call dynamic meta-analysis. And we think this is a particularly useful way of providing evidence for uh, guiding local context-specific uh, decisions using a global evidence base. And so the presentation in, of meta-analyses usually looks something like this. So in this case, this is a plot showing the um, effect of different interventions on invasive plant abundance. And as you can see, herbicide is the one that has the greatest uh, effect in terms of reducing uh, invasive plant abundance. And from the perspective of a manager, I might look at this and think, um, herbicide is really useful. I'm going to go and spray it on my invasive plant species. But if I chose a herbicide that hadn't been used in any of the studies that had been uh, looked at in this meta-analysis um, and then apply it somewhere else, um, maybe it wouldn't have as uh, a strong effect on my invasive plant species um, as you find in this study. And that would uh, result in poor transferability from this meta-analysis to the context that I'm working in. Equally, I might be a manager and look at this and think, well, it hasn't got any information about the um, herbicides that we used, um, and it hasn't got any information about the invasive plant species that we used. So I can't take this general result and apply it to the context that I'm interested in. So I might just dismiss this as not being relevant information. And so what we see is that people want information that is relevant to their context. Um, and this relates to external validity. So the transferability of results from one study to a different context. And this study by Gutza and Dorman that I've taken the quote from here um, found that after interviewing forest managers that recommendations on forest conservation were better accepted if they were formulated for a specific context in which the managers were working. And in our experience at Conservation Evidence you see this all the time. So when there's a lack of information um, provided through evidence synthesis um, that is relevant. So when there's a when there's a lack of relevant information provided uh, through evidence synthesis, people often ignore it. So what they do instead is they pick a study or two that is relevant to their context and use those instead, or they use anecdotal information from their friends, uh, from their colleagues who work in contexts that are similar. And this is probably true for lots of fields, but we, we see it all the time in conservation. And so when you think about traditional meta-analyses, um, we think that the process of doing a meta-analysis looks a bit like this. If you consider all of the black boxes as being things that researchers traditionally do, um, and the white box at the bottom is something that um, end users do. So researchers define the question, they search the literature, they extract data, they analyze data, they present findings, and then they interpret, the interpretation of the findings is done by the users along with the um, researchers. Dynamic meta-analysis, um, as we conceive of it using metadata sets, sees a shift in the, in the roles a little bit. So what we um, envisage happening uh, through dynamic meta-analysis is that people would define the question, so researchers define the question that they want, they search the literature, they extract the data, but then the data is analysed by the users and it's also interpreted by the users to a certain extent. And so we built a tool um, and a website called Metadata Set, and the tool has been built in Shiny. Um, and it allows you to do this um, filtering of data and recalibrating of data so that you can uh, analyze it for your context. Currently, we have information on the website about um, invasive species management and agricultural management. And I'm going to go through an invasive species uh, example to make this a bit more um, clear. So if I was a manager that wanted to manage this Japanese knotweed um, species you see here, so this is a widespread invasive plant species all across Europe, causes large economic um, damage. Maybe I'd be interested in spraying it with herbicide. So if I wanted to look at this on our website, I'd go through and click through to the section on Japanese knotweed, where you'd be presented with a bit of information. I'd click on the section that says data by intervention. So this would give you a list of all the different interventions we found information for in our systematic review. 
and then you can go and click through to the section say, that says using a herbicide and then you filter by different outcomes so click that and that gives you a summary of um, all of the studies um, that have used the uh, herbicide to control Japanese knotweed and where these studies were uh, located. Then you can click on uh, expand all to show all of the different outcomes that you can look at and I'm particularly interested in looking at um, abundance of Japanese knotweed. It launches a shiny app, you click start your analysis and this runs an analysis, a bespoke analysis for me showing the average impact of Japanese knotweed for the studies that I'm that we pulled out in our systematic review. And it shows a 73% reduction in Japanese knotweed. Summarizes this in a paragraph, as well as a bit of information about the studies. You can get a summary forest plot, and a funnel plot. But we think the really powerful thing that you can do is filter information um, to your specific context. So if I was interested in imazapir, which is a particular type of um, uh, herbicide, I might filter by those covariates down there. And then this produces a result to show that there was an 80% reduction in Japanese knotweed rather than 73% reduction. Um, and we have all different covariates that you can filter on. And we think that this is potentially a powerful way of uh, people um, making a meta-analysis relevant to their context. One other way of doing this is by looking at the um, study summaries that we have. So we have written uh, short summaries of the methodologies that are used in different studies, and you can reweight studies based on their relevance. So this applies an extra weight in addition to inverse variance weighting. So reweighting these studies can result in a change in your um, overall effect size. This is all available uh, on GitHub, so you can look at the code that's gone into this, and I can share this on the Shine, uh, oh, sorry, on the Slack group. And so, what we want to do next is um, part of the reason that I wanted to talk uh, here is um, we want to engage with the synthesis community and get them to see what they think about this um, project. What could we do with it? What extra things could we do that they think would be interesting? We also want to engage with practitioners, so we specifically want to do some user testing, see what they would want from a tool that's like this, because at the moment this is just a work in progress and we um, realize that it's a bit ugly and it's not very user friendly. And we also want to add more data so you can do more meta-analysis. So we'd be really interested in, in collaborators um, working with us on this. This is also available as a preprint that you can find here and I'll share information about this later. Finally, I just want to thank uh, Gorm Shackelford, who worked, um, who did the majority of the work on this project. Bill Sutherland, uh, who is my boss at Conservation Evidence, and Millie Hood, who's also been collaborating with us on this, as well as the Conservation Evidence team, and Biorisk, uh, who I'm funded through, um, and this is funded through the David and Claudia Harding Foundation. Um, and finally, I just want to say thanks to you for watching. Um, I'd be really happy to discuss this. So if anyone wants to uh, drop me any messages or emails, um, I'd be happy to discuss this uh, further later. Okay, thanks very much.